Hey guys, you know that uh, that Darth Vader is uh, Luke's father? Whoa, spoiler alert! Yeah, Did you know that the human head weighs eight pounds? Spoilers! Did you know that Snape kills Dumbledore? Ah! Did you know that if you listen to our cast, you might get something spoiled? Just a warning. Do you want spoilers? You will. kids careless and whisper <laughs> now for like the asmr couple what the fuck yeah the that? asmr couple and then she's just like in the middle of it like oh, wait. <laughs> she, 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 she should talk live and just gradually get lower and it was like as it goes on there's like more like the, the dry mouth sound <laughs> 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 Hey nerds, it's the Nerd Funnel Podcast! This is Ivan, and today I'm here with Bob Shui and Fong, and today we are talking Logan. We saw it last night. A lot of us, most of us, cried like a little bitch. I know. Oh, I, hey, I hey. I'm, I you think know. I'm dead inside. No, I'm talking about me. Oh. Yeah. No, I, I cried like a little bitch. I didn't cry for some reason, and I have no idea why. Like, I was like, this is so sad, and nothing came out. Are you are you out of feelings? Did you I, just feel yourself out? I don't know. It was weird. And <laughs> you didn't feel anything. No, I <laughs> felt stuff, but like nothing was happening. It didn't translate to face. a physical response. Yeah. So it was a devastatingly good movie. I would I feel like really is what good. we feel across the board. Um, yeah, it was. Oh my god! Cr- it was a, it was a critical success, and that it was like critically damaging me. <laughs> there were crits all over. Yeah. Especially with that R rating, uh, we now have uh, Wolverine just slicing the shit out of everything. And his daughter. That was a really, really loud movie. Loud, like, volume-wise? Yeah. Yeah, that, that Dolby was kicking in there. Mm. Like, I... I haven't been to a movie for a couple months, but mm-hmm. like I don't remember it being that loud. Does that have something to do with like the sound editing? Is that unique to movies? Like even though it's the same like theater quality, like do they yeah. change the leveling on? Well, the no. Mo- like sometimes they'll for a movie they'll specifically just turn up the volume. Like mm-hmm. I remember when I went to go see The Dark Knight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, those that was I remember seeing that was that fucking right. loud. They came in and had to do like a, a preface, like a. a like a, a dis- what is that? What am I? The concierge guy comes in and sm- yeah. the, the, the like. That dude came in today. I mean, yesterday too. He's all oh, like, no by way. the way, what? it's a long movie. If you want to pee, you better do it now. I was like, thanks. And then like ten minutes in, I was like, I should have fucking listened. Wait, <laughs> I, 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 I tried to get up and go. I, I fucking bummed because I missed the, the the Wolverine on Wolverine fight. Oh yeah. But uh, oh, I couldn't miss that. I couldn't. I, couldn't fr- I missed the first bout, but I couldn't hold it anymore. Jeez. It was just like too long. But, but that, that's, that's what we're paying for now is the concierge service to tell us that we need to pee before the movie instead of having to remember it ourselves. <laughs> that, that's what the movie theater experience that, that's, is that's going for. full service right hey, there. Hey, everybody, remember to pee. No, full service would be like him going around yeah, with a little, 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 little colostomy little, bag. Yeah. Like, piss, puts little in. piss bin. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the piss boy? Piss boy. Cha- like an actual chambermaid. Yeah, exactly. A little chamber piss pot. Bowl. So we, anyone. so we saw Logan yesterday, we and did. I thought it was devastatingly good. So let's go around the table real quick. Let's just yeah. get a, a quick barometer reading and what you guys, what what you took away from the movie. Because there were a lot of themes in this movie yeah. that yeah. just bit down on a dick and did not let go. The dick Whoa. of our souls. It was, it, it was, this was a slog dicks. of a movie. I feel like this is one of those movies that is so good, but you can only watch once, maybe twice if you're like like cruising for a bruising. Yeah. I don't you know think I, mean? I want to watch it again anytime soon. Like, no, that, that that's exactly right. You have to, this is a movie that you're going to have to have breathe. Yeah. <laughs> this, <laughs> like this is going to be like, this is going to be like, it's not something that you revisit until there's like uh, uh, something traumatic in your life. And you're just like, this feeling feels really familiar. And then you're just like, you find a Blu-ray, a dusty Blu-ray from 20 years ago called Logan. And you're just like, <laughs> Oh, that's what that is. <laughs> so that's find something traumatic is. in your life. This was a trauma. God, good lord, there yeah. was so much death. It was so heavy. Bobby, tell me what you thought about it. Um, well, I liked the the cinematography and the sound editing. Everything was great. The performances were awesome. Uh, Patrick Stewart nailed oh, that yeah. debilitated Patrick Stewart role. The, oh the, my the god, yes. role. It was that's that it was, was so rough. That was hard to watch. Oh, it was 
fucking hard to watch. Like in the, the very fact that I felt uncomfortable the whole time, like um, just because I, you know, that situation is familiar to me what what logan and, and charles anybody are through who, i feel like they nailed like anybody who has to be put in a caretaker position yeah oh, yeah. yeah that yeah, is definitely. it was heart-wrenching to just watch someone you love just deteriorate fade away yeah, yeah. It was very it was very reminiscent of like my grandfather when he was 98 and like had round the clock nursing yeah. care and like just they really nailed that that aspect of it and the the, the sense mm -hmm. of what that feels like and what you have to do and logan he's like carrying him around he's frustrated professor right. x is fucking frustrated right. like everybody's just fucking mad about this situation yeah and that yeah. and i i feel like i've i personally have never had i know you have to a little bit of that uh bobby but like yeah. i've never had to do that but i've seen like that look on people's face when they're being taken care of and the people who are taking care of them. Yeah. There's just like this. And you know what? Fuck. You know, what Patrick Stewart did really well is capture. I think the fear that he had of himself and of, of not knowing of, of losing bits of his memory. Mm -hmm. yeah. And cause I know what that looks like in real life. And I saw that in him mm -hmm. in the performance and that's what got to me. That was hard to watch, but it was really, really good. Um, and then, that, 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 like you said, that frustration that Logan has, like just that rage. But the, the 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 hardest part is for him is that he doesn't have the the body and the the strength left to channel that rage anymore. Right. Just kind of building and building. So he just like drinks and drinks and drinks. Right, right. Oh right. man, that was rough to watch. Um, I did, I did. Uh, you, you. I kept looking over at you and. And you looked like me during Rogue One. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. just like you just like kept going to the edge of your seat and put your head in your hands. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh fuck. Yeah, well, it touches you. It touches you. Like pulls those drawstrings out, and you like you're pulled towards the screen in certain yeah. moments. Oh yeah. yeah, it's amazing. I didn't like some of the plot stuff. Oh. Um, some of those things were kind of like glaring. Like yeah, missteps. I remember like hearing like on my left side just you being like, ugh. <laughs> every, yeah. every once in a but great while. You almost like as as immediately as you as you notice those, they kind of just were kind of blanketed back down underneath the solid performances and the right. amazing action sequences yeah. and just the viscerality of it. And I think you bring up a great point because this movie isn't like a plot driven movie. And I think that's the brilliance of it. Mm -hmm. Like this, 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 this movie is all about the character performance, right. about character exploration, and why. Yeah. You know, I think well, I've said this many times before. Like, if we do, uh, you know, narrow but deep yeah. instead of wide and shallow, mm -hmm. people fucking love that. Respond to it. And yeah, absolutely. This is like this is Fox hit it out of the park and they're going to be like scrambling like, whoa what did we do right here well they, they took they took their they, they, they took their time with it like i mean as far as like they weren't rushing from like okay well we have this battle sequence we need to set up for and we have that plot point we need to hit it was like no we're just gonna let patrick stewart and hugh jackman do their thing with their characters and just give them as many opportunities as we can to let them have time together and yeah. then we'll showcase a few of these new people too. Like the, the right. little girl did an excellent job. Oh, and they give God, them so me. much room to do that. Was, her name was Daphne shoot, King. Daphne King? Or so, Keen. Keen, or something. something like that, yeah. Um, very, I mean, to not get buried under the weight of Patrick Stewart and Hugh Jackman doing right? those heavy roles, like you had to step up the game. Yeah. And that's one of the things I admire. Well, she was mute most of the time. So she gets to like act just through her face. So. But the intensity that, yeah, the intensity she brought to the role was amazing. Um, the another thing I, I, what I thought was a little lacking was, and I brought this up after we, we, we left the theater, was that the enemy so much wasn't a tangible thing. Like right. it was time and age and yeah. death, and it wasn't like a charismatic, sympathetic villain. Yeah. I mean, this is pretty much just like evil corporation, mad scientist, jackass mercenary. And that's what I think, again, that's the brilliance of this movie, that it didn't need that. Mm -hmm. It was just simply this was, you know, the, the, one of the main themes that I saw was like the ceaseless march of time. And like, yeah. like basically you get to see time 
time, time makes fools of us all, essentially. Yeah. yeah. The enemy was just fucking life, which I think any, yeah, I <laughs> which everyone down. can identify <laughs> with. That's fuck, dude. Situational, like yeah, situational enemy it wasn't like yeah anything. It was like beyond their control. It was like well, we get this all. Although eventually we did find out that um, the evil scientist dude did have a part in. Like well, his dad did messing up the the mutant gene, right? Like, oh, did he? Well, oh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I know what you he mean. He like he like put shit in the water or like the, grow the crops or whatever, so that there was repressing the mutant gene, so there uh-huh. weren't as many born. Right, and oh, that, so okay. that kind of truncated how many were born until they're just a rarity. I see. And I think it was messing with the mutant powers too. Like it was just was like debilitating them or something. And we'll put the spoiler bumper up, but like I love how like he was in mid evil evil scientist rant and he just like shoots him in the neck oh yeah that was fucking great and that's it it punctuates a big part of this movie is that you know it the i feel like the what they were trying to get across was that life is fleeting and almost meaningless Mm -hmm. and like best laid plans of mice and men yeah Yeah. and like they and violence is terse and almost like random acts of violence and that's what that that's the theme they set right from the very get-go. I mean, it's Logan in the beginning, just minus those business in the truck. Some random tr- random like you know gang members come along and start trying to boost his car, mm-hmm. and he just freaking kills him right. after he gets over his claw ed. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and you know of course it was great. They set the tone right away with an f bomb, the first line of the movie. Right. Logan just waking up and going like that, <sighs> that 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 was it. That was it. I mean, that was the 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 entire movie encapsulated is that sense when you wake up and you kind of trying to put your world together and then you wake up and you're like oh the world's put together fuck and then you just kind of go with it yep, right yep, yeah. yep that was the sense that carried through the whole movie i know that feeling i like uh sorry i was gonna go into a different thread what about you fong um well, what were things that you know jumped out at you and what you i mean i just i can't get over like the amazing acting from that little girl i mean again she's acting with Hugh Jackman and Sir Patrick Stewart. And then and 85% on, of the time, she's not saying a goddamn thing. Right. Yeah. And then on top of that, like, they did a really great job with her action sequences. Like, and I know there's a lot of uh, restrictions when you have child actors on set, they can only work X number of hours mm-hmm. and, and all that junk. Safety so, hazards and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of interested in how they filmed all of her stuff. I was trying to see, like, did they CGI her in anywhere? Like, what at what points was she CGI'd in or what points was a double? Yeah. And I couldn't find the seams. Like, it was Isn't pretty that, seamless. That was pretty awesome. There's there's an actual article, I wa- uh, or a video essay or whatever I watched. Like, there's so many scenes in that movie that are CGI and they, you just won't know. Just don't that's know. That's so cool. And that's how you do CGI. Because when people think CGI, they think like fucking aliens and starships and stuff. Mm-hmm. And those have to look impressive. But I mean, the best CGI is when you don't notice that it's there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's more subtle. Rocket yeah. Jump uh, uh, put out a great video essay on that actually about how if, if it serves the story, yeah. that's when you use CGI and stuff like that. And yeah. How like, for example, Fury Road, mm-hmm. there was a ton of CGI. Yeah, and yeah. Nobody fucking re- knew that because they were all like, they were bound by the spectacle of like the practical effects. But right. like the fact that the canyons mm-hmm. that they're driving down, those are actually CGI. Well, dude. Especially yeah. with non-biological things like just cars and mountains and shit like that that's right. there's that's in, it's almost infallible now it's almost indistinguishable yeah. the hardest part is when you get to like you know up close and personal facial right, stuff or right, like right. really yeah. fantastical yeah. stuff but like you know they, they cgi in the cars all the time they put like three or four cars in and green screen the rest and then the, then the background is all like the cityscapes and everything it's all cgi even if Did they you know have that city. water was like really really difficult to do water's hard to model you ever try to model that's water I've heard. and yeah. the person who who wrote the program in order to make basically the industry standard for like CGIing water today yeah. is Hero from Hero Nakamura from Heroes. What? Yeah, you didn't know no that? Way. No way. Yeah. That's crazy. What did he do? Nissan Versa. <laughs> That's what he did. No, he, he basically he he was on uh, the cover of Time magazine yeah. for a long time ago yeah. as a he was he's a legitimate child genius. Oh mm. shit. And then he went to go work for uh Industrial Light and Magic. And he wrote the program that basically is now the the, the foundation of the ind- industry standard for how they make uh, CGI water. That's cool. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. 
I did I, not know that. I saw a thing where they showed how they mo-capped water by like putting these, um, f- like, you know how when they, they mo-cap, they put those little targets on them? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So they put like a whole bunch of the tiniest little grains they could together, mm-hmm. and then they stuck it in water, and then they dyed the water, and they put a high contrast so they could see how the the, the patterning of the swirls of all the pebbles. Really? And oh, so they wow. mo-capped all those little pebbles and like thousands and thousands of these pebbles to like get the tiniest points to reference and it took like a whole bunch of like super powerful computers and like oh, crazy math bet. but yeah. they modeled water really good yeah. for like this is like a Scripps Institution of Oceanography like hydrodynamic dynamic studies but no doubt they probably you know I'm sure oh, Hollywood the, the, just ported that over there were like VFX studios probably yeah, pounding down like, sli- yeah. like salivating over that stuff what else did you think Fong? I, Sorry, I, I didn't I cut just you off like, there no that's fine um just the character development, how much we got to know about them. Because that's always been like my biggest thing is whenever I watch a movie, why should I care about this person? And we haven't been getting that in any movie right. recently. Right. But for this, it was like, this is Wolverine. This is the disease he's going through. This is Professor X. This is what he's going through. This is where they live. And this is the girl. This is the program she's from. Here's her caretaker. Here's what she did before that. Mm -hmm. And just on and on and on. And I loved it. And none of it felt like it was shoehorned in. Like, it did not feel like a long movie to me. Did this this movie to you still feel like, uh, like an indie kind of, a really small budget indie film in a lot of ways? Yeah, I would say in terms of like writing and effects and in the ways that like they utilized quote unquote special effects. Because this this to me, like when I say indie, I meant like small budget films. Yeah, yeah. Because this to me is reminds me immediately of Leon the Professional and The Road. Well, I, I haven't seen either. The so Professional, I yeah. Say. I th- I think it feels most like that when it's doing its character moments. Mm-hmm. Like With I Hugh feel Jackman like and the yeah, girl, yeah. when the, the quiet moments, the quiet moments definitely the very indie feel film to it. Like that's one of the things that was making me hesitant about this film in the first place because when I saw the trailers, I was like, I don't know what to make of this film. Like I don't know what genre it falls into. Right. Like I mean, especially with like Fox and Marvel and superhero movies, they've been kind of like giving them their own flavor as far as like. Well, like Ant Man was a heist kind of movie, right? And then yeah, and I think Winter Soldier was like a spy movie. Yeah, like, right, yeah. like then like uh, I see the trailers for this, I'm like, what is this? And then I'm like, the closest thing I can come to was like, this feels like you know Terms of Endearment. Like it's like a fucking yeah. it's an indie road indie road, road trip movie. or like um uh what's that fucking um uh Susan Sarandon and uh. Thelma and Louise, Thelma and Louise. Uh, okay. Yeah. Like kind of like yeah, buddy picture on the road type thing. Except yeah. did you know? insanely you know depressing <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah Stanley wasn't well, but, there although it ended about the same for Logan and, and Xavier as it did for Thelma and Louise that's, they didn't, that's fair oh, they didn't, neither of them made it out but it was a good ride right was, and that was more important was like ride, we kind of yeah. all knew where they were going to end up right like we knew this was going to be the end we knew that Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart were not going to be reprising their roles we knew it was set in the future that things were kind of winding down for this so we all kind of knew going in that it was probably going to be the case that they weren't going to make it alive so yeah. I think that's one of the reasons it allowed it to get to breathe to kind of have take its time is because like we're no no rush to get anywhere because we all know where we're going so let's, let's enjoy the journey it was so weird that they when they were just like oh it's 2029 I was like Oh, that's so far in the future. And then I was like, no. wait, that's 12 years from now. That's not bad. Oh, fuck. Shit. Oh, we're getting old. <laughs> Seriously, right? Then um, the, uh, I actually thought it might have been better to set it a little farther in the future, honestly. Because I feel like that's still like approximate. Like that's foreseeable to us right now. Right. I don't yeah. know if that makes it more relatable, but I kind of feel like, well. I think it was a brilliant movie. I think it was good. 29 it was, was good. good. Yeah, okay. yeah, 29. I was like. Oh, but it's, if it when you hear twenty twenty nine, it feels like it's so far off, like yeah. space cars, and right? Yeah, like that shit you saw in the car magazines. Exactly, but we were bo- and- born in the eighties, and then so like when kids today they hear about like twenty twenty nine, they're just like, oh, that's like twelve years from now, and yeah, be, like eighteen. Yeah. Like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. What? It's so weird. Six. It's so weird for me to like go through like. When I'm doing HR shit, I got to input info and I'm like, you have a job? You were born like in 2000. Oh my God. You're like 60. What the fuck uh-huh. is happening? You're just like, you look at your hands. When it's did like, they become so old? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, I, was, I felt this form, but this arthritis is killing me. Right? 
God. I got lower back problems. I need some lumbar support. This chair is terrible. Uh. And this is what this fucking movie was in a nutshell. It's just like, oh, by the way, everybody gets old. And I was like, that's what I took which away is, from this Which movie. is an insane uh, kind of... Uh, kind of comparison to make because so much of that movie considered children too. Like especially mm-hmm. in the end, right. like the whole mm-hmm. thing was to get to youth, was to yeah. get to these children. Well, it's basically the 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 classic handoff story, but we're not going to see these kids kids again. But you know, right. yeah. I almost almost think I <laughs> almost thought at the very end of the film they were they were going to be like we're the new X Men. Yeah, or some shit like yeah, that. Yeah, something. It or they did, were gonna, be, or they were gonna like flash them and it was gonna. It did do a thing where it didn't end like all the other uh, Marvel movies ended. It yeah. just seemed kind of abrupt. And that's good. I don't. No, I, no, and that is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm so it, glad that they finally made one that didn't feel like it was gonna lead into something else. And we can the, perfectly yeah, encapsulate like, this as its own work. It wasn't like, oh look, they did it, or oh, they completely failed. It was kind of somewhere in the middle and it was like Life goes on. Yeah. yeah. Hey, look at how it's much Jurassic this thing Park. sucks. <laughs> And, and you know what the cool thing I mean especially our expectation was to see a stinger or a trailer at the end yeah. and there was none there was none there's yeah. nowhere to go cause what else yeah although there was kind of foreshadowing like when she turned his grave uh, grave cross on its, on its side to yeah. an X and then kind of walked off with being framed by it it's kind of like she's kind of being like a new X group with the rest of those mutants because I mean they were right. progeny genetic reproductions or progeny of yeah. original X-Men so you had the the girl with the frost breath who was Bobby Drake's offspring you had the uh-huh. telekinesis dude who was Jean Grey's you had um, that uh, that that electric guy who was electrifying things this probably Storms because he was also African American oh okay I totally thought there was going to be like a whole thing about like how uh, Laura was going to be the uh was going to be a like a secret darter of him and Jean Grey or some shit That's like that. That's what oh. I thought. I was like, "Oh shit, did that happen?" Cuz when he says that line of like, "No, she's yours. Think about doesn't she remind you of someone?" Yes, exactly. And I was like, "Oh. Oh. Oh." Well, but that, it, that uncontrollable uncontrollable temperament, I mean, not just him, but Jean Grey's, you know, phoenix form right, too. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. But then they did like explained it as like, "Oh, they were all born in random mexican girls yeah and i was like oh, oh well i guess yeah. that's i guess it makes that's sense what they were doing right and i was like oh that's that boring <laughs> boring can't afford the x-men you got to keep those labor costs down but here's the thing like everybody put in really high bar performances oh, yeah. steven merchant was in there i was yeah. like what the fuck is wheatley doing here <laughs> and like richard e grant who has one of the very distinct honors of being a non-canon Doctor Who, a, a canon non-canon Doctor Who, oh, okay. and also having also been in Doctor Who, mm-hmm. and as the great intelligence. I just wanted to throw that out there. I love that. My, my British actor's there getting some real cred. Your whoology. God, you know it so well. Ugh. Let's, <laughs> let's not... It, in the, <laughs> That's a whole other In the cast. interest of... My penis getting used at some point in time. Okay. Let's not go into Let's that. Go. <laughs> Until next week when we talk about the Doctor Who premiere coming up. When is that coming up? That's coming uh, April 15th. Oh, okay. Wow. Two days after my brother's birthday. Oh, cool. And a couple days after my ex What? 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 And, and tax day. And Oh, no, that is tax day, isn't it? Yeah. The Ides of April. Right. The Ides of April file and shits. Follow them yeah. shits quick, people. And then go through space and time with Doctor Who. Yeah, then escape from the IRS through the TARDIS. <laughs> um, so that so to link it back, the ceaseless march of time. Yeah, yes. right. Does this movie is this is this movie is and, like is is like looking back and being like, I'm old now. Yeah, and and the thing is, like, that's kind of what's so great about the old man Logan storyline because nothing. Um, emphasizes mortality more than the guy with healing factor is dying yeah. <laughs> and getting older. When I went in that scene where he's just like, one meal, 20 hours on the road, she's what? She's 11, I'm fucking 90. 
Yeah. And I was, I halfway was expecting Logan to be like, by the way, I'm like 200, 300 years old. <laughs> by the way. Got a few years on you, but he doesn't feel it. Like, I'm right. I'm sure, oh, well, I mean, he feels it now, but I'm sure for most of his life, he wasn't feeling the age until yeah. he started getting that whatever junk was in the water or the food. Uh, oh, and I liked the, the nod end. to like his original appearance in the comics yeah. with the oh, beard. Oh, they shaved the his hair. beard. That was pretty hilarious, too. Um, he looked I, good though in this. He did. I, I, the 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 fucking gruff beard was becoming of the character. Yeah, the mutton chops. Well, that's no, what, no, not the mutton chops. The full on Santa uh, Claus. Okay. Yeah, the the, the willy nilly salt and pepper beard was good. Yeah. But what you so what you guys think? Speaking of March of Time and that beard, about the fact that they brought actual comics into another added kind of a meta later a la Deadpool of actually having X Men comics. And I was going to ask in you guys the, about that. I really liked it. You in did? The, in the movie. Yeah. Took me completely out. Really? Took me completely out of I, the moment. I thought it was cool that like they addressed it. And Wolverine's like, yeah, I mean, some of this shit is true, but it was mostly fabricated to sell comics. Mm-hmm. And I really liked that aspect of it. Like, why pretend that this isn't a thing? Everyone knows it exists. And it made it more multi-layered for me, that universe. What did you think, Bob? Um, I mean, it was multi-layered, but as far as like, well, we're, like we're Deadpool, like you expected that. That's what it's about. But this one, we were so in like a grounded reality, right? And yeah. then it was a little bit of a weird miss, like step to have that kind of step out of the box for a second uh-huh. and see Wolverine in his panel form and you know hopping around doing. And then his- at the very end, when they're standing over his grave, there's the the kid with the Wolverine doll. Yeah. Yeah. That was weird. To have a it toy. Like, really? yeah. And it kind of makes you wonder because like, so this is supposed to be contiguous with the rest of the movies in some form or fashion, right? Yeah. But where in the timeline now is all that, you know, glory days of when they'd be having the comics written about them taking place? And why is it in the stale style of 80s comics? Nobody was like drawing the 80s comics during the 2000s when apparently all this was happening. Well, I mean, I guess after X-Men Apocalypse, I mean, now there's a new timeline set up. So between... X Men Apoc and X Men Apocalypse and twenty or and Logan. Do, do you think we're new- Do you think we're on the new timeline? Do you think that was a part of the new timeline, or is this oh. just like huh. a completely unique timeline we haven't seen? That's a good question. Um, I feel like we're on the timeline, but they kept the connections to the pre to everything that happened before so vague. Like they, they just briefly. Yeah. Uh, mentioned how Professor X accidentally had like a seizure that destroyed the Westchester, Westchester. house right. and all the mutants there, but they didn't really go into it. Yeah, and it's like this, you know, this debilitating thing that you know probably helped cause his his degenerative yeah. form, but they didn't connect to it very well, so it leaves it kind of open, like into interpretation. I think where it could be maybe connected to the timeline, maybe not. I kind of I want to believe it is just for. Because I'm like a completionist, I want to feel like things are closed <laughs> off. Um, but I kind of like that uncertainty too. It's like, well, this is just this is just how things end up. No matter, it kind of makes it like like the the kind of puts a nail in the coffin of that right, marching right. time thing. It's like no matter what time limit is, this is how it ends up. This is a period. Like it's there's no period. changing it. Yeah. yeah, there's no changing. It's like whether it was the original trilogy, Brian Singer. How mad is Brian Singer now, though? Or if it's the X-Men, um, the first class timeline, like, no matter what, this is how it ends up. <laughs> and that's kind of sad. Somebody yeah. call but, somebody call James McAvoy and just let him know this is the end, oh, period. Geez. But how, how, how mad is Brian Singer now? Uh, what do you think? That, like, they've put such a heavy punctuation on the end of something he started. Well, I mean, they're like 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 we were talking about. There's still room in the middle there to kind of flesh it out. Because I think what his reaction would be, well, if Brian Singer was saying, "Well, I see how you've ended it, my stuff," and that's really cool. Either he likes it or he doesn't. But where do we go from here? Like, where do we? Where does the rest of my creation go? Do we go backward and fill in the time? Do we start a new X Men? Do we do X Force? Do we do X? Uh, well, then they just days of future past it again. I know they're they're gonna oh, do. That's right. Yeah. They're gonna do Alpha Flight. I know they want to do Alpha Flight at some point. Canadian okay. X Men, X Force is on, like getting some play too. As far as like, what's, well, what's the one that's that's on FX right now? Legion. 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 I'm actually oh, okay. writing an article about that right now. Um, there, those those ones are very 
that's set in an alternate reality. It's not necessarily the Marvel universe. They were going to start it more closely related, but now it's just characters that are kind of based on the ones in the Marvel universe, but not really. But they can call them attached mutants, to it though. Because they can, it's, yeah, because they it's can. Fox. Then they do, oh, okay. but um, it's not like connected to whatever is actually happening in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And the reason they did that is because like the kind of themes and issues they wanted to to, to bring up and work with as far as um. Uh, as far as like mental health disabilities and things like that and kind of more of a character study of David instead of like having him just be like the crazy you know maniacal legion guy like taking fuckers out um, was kind of a direction they they decided to go with but lightly attached to the MCU so hmm. as far as I understand from what I've what I've read because I've only watched the first two episodes maybe three. Oh, was it out already it's out there's, there's like four episodes I in I got some more left in my DVR um, but I can't watch them all at, at once because it's very intense you have to like sit down uh, kind of like painfully visceral and and and, and, and kind of depressing in this way uh, in the way that Logan was, mm -hmm. is that it takes a lot of energy and a lot of focus. <clears throat> excuse me to watch. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. You have to pay attention. It's not like where you can. It's like where you're watching like Flash, or or uh, Supergirl, or or you can um, just kind of like popcorn you, watch. You, yeah, and you can like tune in, tune out, text. and it's like, well, as long as I catch the last 15 minutes, I know everything's gonna be okay, and I just want to see how they round it out. But that's how I was watching Logan last night because I was trying to. We we threw a a surprise birthday party for. Uh, for Bobby last oh, night. Oh, you guys. And I was just like, oh, the whole time I was on my phone, I was like, motherfucker, where the fuck is everybody? <laughs> right? And then we got there and like Manny was there and it's like, oh, hey, Manny, having a drink by himself at a table of well, for eight. eight. <laughs> well, hats off to you guys. Um, It was a complete success. I had no idea. I had, I had no Yay. preliminary preconceptions of it being a party of any sort. Yeah, and then you were like, hey, can you text Brendan and see where he is? And I'm like trying to do it without Bobby seeing me. I'm like, fuck, he's behind me. God damn it, my phone's freezing. Meanwhile, <laughs> my, my, meanwhile, I, Bobby is just like, oh, yeah. I, I, I'm I, ready I, to go home, guys. I couldn't. I've, I'm so tired. That two movie took it a lot out of me. And we were like, it was emotional. Motherfucker, no. Yeah, we, were like, <laughs> we had to like, you. we had to like, carry my up. ass next to him go arm in arm and drag him to the restaurant <laughs> it was awesome but like when when when's the uh that uh that article dropping uh this week it'll be on wednesday wednesday Sweet. which is uh, the today is the look at that time stamp we have the calendar technology well, i mean when people are just like oh hey oh, oh by the way happy daylight savings day daylight savings day, <sighs> savings time lost an hour of sleep last yeah. night yeah that's not a good day not a good day not good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, Legion, I'm writing it up. It'll be done by Wednesday of this week, which is um, a... 13, 14, 15. 15. The Ides, the, of, Mar the Ides, of, Ides March. of March. Check it out on nerdfunnel.com. You can read about uh, Bobby's Legion experience. Legion experience. Yeah. It's like, it's it's not my favorite show on right now. What's your favorite show on right now? Um, actually, I have to get back to you on that. I don't really, I couldn't tell. Not you. even, not even Rebels. Rebels is good. Rebels is good. Um, it's good. It's it's good. The past two episodes were good. The the past the the mid season, the middle parts of the season were were terrible. Um, do you have an Amazon Prime? I do account? not. Oh my god, well, I'm gonna lend you something. Yeah. You, you can use mine. Me, me and Fong, we're watching this. Uh, oh yeah, this fucking phenomenal show uh, called Patriot. So you may good. Have, if you're on Facebook, you'll probably see okay. like uh, promos for it. But it's like it's as if like Wes Anderson directed a spy, uh, a no spy way. show. Wait, what it's, period? It's no, it's like uh, it's like it's modern modern day. day. Takes yeah. place in 2012. Okay, but the premise is like. Uh, this this kind of depressed and sad uh not uh, <laughs> uh, uh field agent is contacted by his father yeah uh he's who's the director of uh, national intelligence mm -hmm. or well he's basically in charge of like uh he's not dni is he no he's like the director of like the cia essentially okay. and he gets contacted and um, by his father to go take a bag of money mm -hmm. over to Luxembourg yeah and just give it to somebody but like he's he's like super fucked up because he spent two months in a hole listening to America uh, bye bye uh, Miss American Pie or whatever straight what yeah 
and like he's fucked up he's just he's just spent all his time and just like uh uh uh, uh what, what was that dutch place where they'd smoke a lot of weed um, amsterdam. Amsterdam. amsterdam just smoking weed and playing folk songs every day Oh, cool. It's so Yeah, but his folk songs strange. are like all about his missions. Right. And, then, you know, and like, <laughs> he basically is like talk, singing about people. He like the, how the mission went wrong, his last mission. And he's like, that's how he finds release. And so like, it's basically this like continually escalating events of like how things can go wrong. Wow. That seems to be the theme for today, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to check it out. I, I think I think the 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 I mean I have to really pick and choose what I watch because I don't have a lot of time. Yeah, I understand. So the it's one, well crafted. The it one is very good. I guess I used to say that this I'll have to check it out. I have to get Amazon Prime because I also want to watch finish watching Man High Castle. That was a good season. Yeah. This past season, this was better. Um, the one I think I look forward to the most that's on TV right now is The Expanse on Sci-Fi. Really? Yeah, it's really good. Um, have you been keep, keeping up with it? And yeah, stuff? it's the one thing I've been keeping up with, like regular and Le- Legion is pretty good too. Um, I was keeping track of magicians on Sci-Fi, and that kind of sucks now. Oh, lame. And it looked like it sucked from the beginning. Yeah, and I kind of thought yeah. it's it's gotten too up its own ass with drama. It's too CW now, like I see. like Vampire Diaries style. Oh, why? Do, it, 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 are there just pretty people everywhere? Yeah, it's just it's too much oh, pretty my drama. Gosh. Pretty people drama. Um, like uh actually you know also what's good is legend of tomorrow it's huh. gradually replacing the flash as my favorite dc one on tv oh, okay. with doctor who alumni yeah right huh. um but anyway yeah like uh i'll have the legion one up on on wednesday full show so catch that on nerdfunnel.com on march 15th um uh, what about you what are you watching right now Fong. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not watching you're shit. Not watch, you're watching shit. You're you're watching Nathan Fillion's at. No, sorry, Nate Drake. I mean, I'll Nathan watch Nathan Drake's ass on Twitter Four. I mean, I'll I'll you know I'll watch that one episode of Firefly again. We finally got a a, a PS4 into the house yes, thanks to did. Fong's uh, <laughs> uh, tax return. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> making the months. <laughs> and I was I I remember I was giving you shit because I was just like, hey, hey. Uh, I don't know how to tell you this, but that's not a PlayStation 4 Pro. Yeah. Uh, you should be ashamed of yourself for spending your money on something that you wanted, but it wasn't what wasn't I wanted. Right one. <laughs> it wasn't the right one, okay? How dare you? Yeah, I didn't want to spend like $500 on a console, and I was like, eh, I'll get the Slim, that's fine. Mm-hmm. We did a, a live unboxing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I saw that. I posted that. That was cool. On Facebook.com slash NerdFunnel, you can check it out there. Um, there were some... <laughs> <laughs> there were there were jokes apparently. There were, <laughs> there were just a few. There were a few jokes. <laughs> I had a question about Logan. If I can ask you guys, yeah, we've been touting the merits of the movie. Yeah. Well, was there anything that stood out like glaring errors or deficiencies you felt <sighs> that were there? I mean, there wasn't much, but I hate to be like the negative Nancy. Yeah. But I mean, on my defense, this movie is kind of like negative Nancy yeah. a lot of the time. Yeah. Oh yeah, and I think some of the times we we see the the the. The ben- the the awesomeness of the movie greatest when we we actually take a time to like look at it's a little bit of fault too yeah that's fair and but you're also asking us to like look for faults for something we just watched once yeah, it's yeah. Hard. and like I I couldn't see the faults for like Rogue One yeah. until I saw it twice that's true. we're still in the the we were in the honeymoon we're the in afterglow the honeymoon stage. yeah yeah no well this is like why well, I, I feel kind of like you know uh, I I feel like I've been violated by this movie so we, oh, we, bu- the- we busted our huge oh, depressing nut yeah. and now we're resting yeah what's 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 the what 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 happens after like a huge traumatic this are we this is post-traumatic stress disorder I know, it's like a little ptsd for sure no i'm just kidding um hashtag the, the, the troops the violent the violence in this one was really like that was almost the thing it was almost a too much for me at one point oh yeah was it was like i've had lot. enough of this like i can't it was super gritty yeah like it was, it was just. I'm like, I'm like, I, I could not take another like, you know, face stabbing. Like it was just straight up face stabbing from the get go. But I'll just say, it was like, good. for some reason, it felt cathartic. Yeah. In that we've had seventeen years prior of just neutered uh, action, if you yeah. will. Yeah. It, it was almost like it was just like a tension, 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 tension. Oh, here's a ton of release. I don't know if you want this much release. Oh, we're still releasing. We're still are you releasing. still are you still with us? Because we're keep, we're gonna keep releasing, especially now that his fucking claws are just going, dude. The, and the coal. Okay, so the 
let's talk about uh, the Professor X death scene. Oh, oh God. Oh, my so heartbreaking. God. It was, that was the, probably the, okay, there were so many, so many high points of acting yeah. in general in this movie. Yeah. Um, but the monologue that Patrick Stewart gives while he's laying in bed, he's just like, I've had the most perfect day ever in a long time and yeah. I don't know if I deserve this. Yeah. He's totally bearing his soul. Yeah. And oh, like absolutely. it was and it's to the wrong transformative. Person. Yeah. And that's the, the, the hard part is Logan's never gonna hear that. Right. And it's just like, oh my God, that was the heartbreak part. I mean as heartbreaking as it was to listen to the monologue. Well, I mean, Laura hears it. Laura yeah. does, but I mean Logan never got to hear right the words that were meant for him. Right, right. And well, it's I mean, just like technically it got to him. I guess through by way of X twenty four. Yeah, but I mean to hear it from the professors, you know, to have him recall it and be lucid, yeah, and be in connection with himself and be like, no, this is you know why I, I feel this or why I'm like this. this is why I feel this way. Yeah, and to have Logan not be able to really understand that straight from his mouth was was tough. It was really fucked up when he like he puts him in the truck as he's like as he's dying. He says like it wasn't me, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. Yeah. Ugh. He just straight up just stabbed him in the chest. That was like slowly too. He just like puts his ch- fist down and it's like whoosh. Yeah. Like he, whoosh. The, that guy enjoyed it. Like, like that. They, they and when they engineered X twenty four or mm-hmm. whatever it was, the Logan clone. Right. Yeah. Like it must be ingrained in him to like enjoy violence because he took. I think he took a pleasure in that one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's fucked up. It's fucked up. It was, but I feel like that was a high point in the movie. Oh, definitely. By being utterly depressing, it was the highest thing. Yeah. <laughs> it was the lowest thing? I don't know. It was the highest low I've ever well, felt. And I, I just liked it because it wasn't like, it, it was a pivotal death scene. And it for, wasn't a ham fisted Yeah, one. exactly. And it was, well, that and also like, he didn't fucking explode with 30 bombs strapped to him or something. It was just a simple, like, he got stabbed quietly. Yeah. Like, almost like a meaningless death, almost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, but it held like so much more gravity because of that. Right, yeah. right. Because I concur. Life can be cut. The string of life can just be cut by Wolverine. By scissors. Like I don't know where I was going. With that one. <laughs> well, that's the, the 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 Greek mythology. The fates had the people's lives on the strings, and, and they, they would just, cut yeah, them. Yeah, I watched Xena. Yeah, right? Yeah, I've seen fucking yeah, Hercules. Yeah, you know where I pulled that from. <laughs> it wasn't my ancient Greek lit class. It was fucking Xena. Yeah. With Bruce Campbell. Yeah. Uh, all his episodes are the best. And it's great because he wears an open shirt like the entire time. Mm. The entire time. There's that 90s like rounded barrel chested open chest hair look. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, Hugh Jackman. <laughs> it's, talking about barrel chest. Barrel let's, talk about, is... let's talk about Hugh Jackman, uh, his performances, but also the fact that for some reason it looked like he, he had this... He struck a nice balance between like totally jacked yeah. and like old man jacked. He's like yeah. old man strong. Yeah, he old man strong. Old they man they strong. got that that look perfect. I thought. Yeah. Like, well, I think also because of all the scars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, they somehow like got his skin to look like saggy, but like it was still like there's like muscles sun. underneath yeah. it. Yeah. I have a client like that actually. I have a, a fifty five year old uh, Brazilian dude. Uh-huh. The guy's as strong as a fucking ox. The guy's a powerhouse. But you can tell, like, right away from looking at him, unless he took his shirt off. But he's just, like, totally strong. The guy can deadlift, like, 500 pounds. He can right. squat, like, 350. He can push, like, close to 600 on a sled. The guy's and insane. I bet he doesn't look fat. Or no. he doesn't not look fit. He looks fit, I'm guessing, right? Yeah, he looks fit, but he doesn't look like bodybuilder. Like, you know how Logan was in uh, Days of Future Past where he got up off the, the bed and he was just, like, like an Adonis, like a like a like yeah. a David chiseled, right? Right. This was like you know a meaty human looking, per like a like a like a human looking person. Yeah, like they really humanized okay. him by taking down the vascularity and the cutness in a, a notch. Right. More relatable. I mean, of course, you just. I mean, even if you are a, a, a mutant and you're superhuman, like as you age, like there's no there's like we said, there's no getting around it. Time makes fools of us all, just yeah. like pickles. What? What? <laughs> what? What? Sometimes I just put pickles in a jar and, well, time makes fools of us all. <laughs> oh, okay. I meant cucumbers. Damn it. There cucumbers. Fuck that one up. <laughs> so how did how do you think that translated into uh, Hugh Jackman's performance? 
probably gave him more time to work on his script and you're not having to work out as much there's that um <laughs> It's just like he can't stop and eat it. He doesn't have to stop and eat a chicken between each take. Yeah, right. It's like uh, I can actually like rehearse for an hour straight without having to like you know go down a protein shake and yeah. lift w- he can weights. Eat donuts again. Yeah. Like. <laughs> no, I think I um, like, yeah, he felt more comfortable in his role. I think yes. it didn't feel like a skin he was wearing as so much as like a like everything a, a part felt of him. way more natural, ingrained. Innate. Yeah, he felt more like a person and less like a caricature. Yes, yeah. because in the previous movies, it was just like you know he throws in bub, he has the whole like attitude problem, he's like super aggro all the time, and they were like, and it was just like the movie was like that's Wolverine, right? That's what you, that's what he that's is. What, that's what you wanted. Yeah, and this is what we give you. Yeah, and they made a point to just dis himself. I think successfully by putting the comic book version of him in there he's like no that's reality that's all made up yeah that's not me that's not who i am do you think that's like a, a thinly veiled um commentary on the brian singers franchise <laughs> <laughs> maybe i don't know I mean, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't really see them doing it intentionally, but I, I don't know. They were definitely know. trying to draw some distance between the him and the Brian Singer one. I'll say that. Like, that, the way yeah. everything was shot, the way it, everything was to put distance between the f- kind of fluffiness of what came before. Like, this was very much, and it has been getting that way incrementally ever since Wol- Origins Wolverine, because that was a big fluffy yeah. pile. Of shit. But... I mean, with uh, the um, the Wolverine movie, yeah. I mean, that was still kind of fluffy, but less so. And it spent more time with him trying to be a, like an actual character and grow. But it still f- it was a it was an odd like middle step. And now this kind of completed the step away from everything that came before. I think. Right, 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 right. And this is like so. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Like this is so far and away far different from any other you know i don't, I, I i hesitate to even call this a superhero movie because they're yeah, not superheroes no one feels like a hero yeah. nobody feels like they're super either no was- oh, except for x23 she's pretty badass like she's doing those wind flips and she's- all that stuff even still it's just like flail it's like flailing arms essentially yeah and, and but- you you're 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 but a what you're you're just a kite in a thunderstorm, Mr. Bond. Oh, are we, are mm. we doing ASMR? Always. A- ASMR, ASMR Bond movies. Mm. I expect you to die. Do you expect me to talk? I'd like you to have a nice taste in my sweaty wiener. <laughs> <laughs> the oh. fact that we've been, for the past couple of weeks, we've been like relishing the fact that we have condenser mics now and, and we can just whisper into them. And, and it still makes sense. It's like audible. Get all, get all those little details. Anyways, <laughs> um, what the fuck were we talking? Uh, about? <laughs> we went into Whisperland, and we could, we we'll get back. Oh, um, so I think yeah, lo- the the Logan kind of uh, like distancing himself from Singer, but not uh, like finally stepping away because it was like a couple of odd steps off the fluff train. Yeah. And it kind of, this is where it finally landed solidly. And of course, the last step. That's not a question I want to pose you guys. Where do we go from here? I don't think we go anywhere from here. I think here. it's over. I think yeah. it's more, yeah. Well, more the fact that they, again, Marvel does have a thing with making genre movies. Yeah. So one, this is, it's it, it was a really well-executed film in general. A really executed, well-executed coming of age. Yes. Yeah. And then, but the other thing is like, they'll probably just end up doing a different genre anyway just because yeah. that's that's what they do well they, they're, they're trying to like in kind of like encapsulate a lot of like with with legion like i think they're they're kind of winding down on like the big okay because i don't think there's any big x movies on the horizon now right no i don't think so there aren't so and here's the thing i read something recently that about when they uh jackman and stewart when they were doing the the press tour uh-huh. and that says that basically yeah these characters are, are retired and then basically unless something way better comes along aka not not from fox like both of them mm-hmm. just like straight up was just like oh you know i think it was a good way to send off the character yeah except if i and and jackman said uh unless something way better comes up or something 
uh, is what P- Patrick Stewart said. And then Hugh Jackman says, like, yeah, I don't think I'd ever play the, the Wolverine again unless it was an Avengers movie. Oh, oh shit. Like, boom. There you go. Boom. Oh. Fuck you. I want to go play at Robert Downey's house. <laughs> well, There's I room mean, real. he's got a nice house. Yeah. It's the all, it's all of, like... The, the Walt Disney Studio lot at this point. <laughs> I think the way the X Men's or X Men are going to go is that we're going to get more shows and things maybe on Netflix or Amazon or on TV like Legion, where it's like smaller, maybe lesser well known mutants or groups kind of being filling out the universe that they've spent so much time in already on the the highest tier with the X Men, right? Right, right. Yeah. So and I know it's not like they don't have a fucking huge. They got a huge catalog to choose from, and you know they've got other hero teams to work with they got Excalibur they got X-Factor they've got uh, Alpha Flight there's a whole bunch of other hero teams that could do they could do and we know that B tier or you know alternate tier uh, hero teams can work I mean look at Guardians Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we know that can work they find a way to make it right I mean it can it can do well so they have a plenty of a big universe in the X-Men to work with too but I will I will make this argument Mm -hmm. I think Logan has made it harder and worse for, for every Marvel movie, no, no, gonna... for Fox, oh. because with this big, huge success that they've made with this movie, yeah, they're never going to let X Men go back to Marvel, and then we're never going to get very true. the yeah. true unified uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe yeah. that we all want. Yeah. But then it's here's, not here's the thing: they have this great golden egg now, right? With mm-hmm. with Logan, but then. They've boxed themselves in at the end. Like now, right. they, they choke on the egg. Like where do they go with it? On right. top of that, they've lost their stars. Yeah, yeah and they're yeah. done with their their contracts and whatnot. Yeah. And then if Marvel wants to, oh, Marvel, I really hope more Marvel would pick up Wolverine for uh, Avengers spot. That would be awesome. Would, but do we want Hugh Jackman back? It's just it's hard to picture anyone else as Wolverine. Or with Deadpool. Point. That'd be kind of cool if he came with Deadpool. Oh, yeah. he he. I really hope he makes a cameo in Deadpool. Because we know Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman get along so well. Yeah. And also, they've always had that, like, the, the fucking Captain America, Tony Stark style, like, oh, they just want to fuck yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> the bromance. Yeah. Is that what they look like all the time? They're just like, hey. <laughs> hey. But they're both really good looking dudes. Well. Yeah. I, I still Deadpool? I'm still pulling for a, a Hugh Jackman as Solid Snake. I'm just still pulling for it. Oh, that'd be perfect. Really? I don't know. I've I, been pulling for it since I 2000. Like, I feel like he's too pretty to play Solid Snake. Oh, come on. They can so, dirty him a bit. Play wa- play Metal Gear Solid again. Tell me that doesn't look like All right. Fuck it, Hugh Jack Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Huge Jackman. Give him, give him give him the mullet, the the or the the mullet and No, the, no, he didn't have a mullet in Metal Gear Solid though. He cut the mullet so they wouldn't confuse him as solid, uh, oh. liquid snake. Of liquid, okay. Wow. That I would expect no less from the man with the same code name as the boss. Which means so much more now. That yeah. <laughs> because, because Revolver Ocelot worked with Big Boss? Yeah. Snake? Anyone? Snake. Anyone? Anyone? And that is the Metal Gear, Sol- uh, Metal Gear Solid reference that we have not done in a long time. Take a drink. That's very true. Oh, wow. It's been a while since we've been Kojima fetished here. Oh, God. Did you oh, see God. Kojima fetished? Did yeah. you see that they actually, like the BBC One radio did a story oh, about yeah. him? He is like legitimate... He's, they were they, they they brought up the segment with like he's been long considered the Steven Spielberg of video games on BBC and I was Whoa. like what is going what is this world we live in that like not only is people are talking about like big budget blockbuster video games in the news but like now they're just talking to Kojima son on the BBC which is highly regarded as like the number one news source in the world. Right. Yeah, that is that is especially for like all arts and culture and like establishing things in the pantheon of greatness. What 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 is this world? That See, we so Kojima is getting the whole the whole um, David Attenborough treatment. Yes. Whoa, that's pretty cool. That is fucking as, crazy. as well. He should. Yeah, I mean, I feel like people just kind of dismiss video games as an art medium, which and- is too bad because there's so many. Yeah, although not so. I mean, it's 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 made a lot of progress in the past oh, few absolutely. years for sure. 
But like, you I would know, argue. the older generation is like, well, that's not art. And it's like, it's, that's so not true. There's storytelling elements. Mm-hmm. There's like, you know, obviously the, 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 the graphic design mm-hmm. part and stuff. And just like how the, how you yourself interact with the world. Mm-hmm. And there's so many little nuanced things that in some ways are like more difficult than you would find in like film or television. Yep. And it's just, it's a very unique medium that I, I think is often neglected. Uncharted series is like, I oh. feel like the, one of the, like having played it again yesterday, I was like, oh yeah, this is why I like this. Yeah. And this is, those games are what Hideo Kojima wants to do, basically. Really? Well, hopefully Death Stranding, well, I mean, he's got Norman Reedus on board That's to do right, Death Stranding. Yeah. That should be something amazing. I'm really exp- having awesome hopes for that. Do you think that. like Norman Reedus signed on to work for him and then PT <clears throat> fell through and he was like, fuck, I have him on contract. I gotta put him in something. <laughs> I feel, almost feel like it. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I, here's, here's what happens. Like, so uh, uh, Konami's fucked me over. Hey, he goes, uh, no man son. Uh, <laughs> Konami uh, fuck me over. Forgive my, my accent. Over. How do you feel about uh, holding a baby usb cord in belly button with gigantic dead whales on the beach and norman's like yeah is there you are p- naked with usb cord yeah right he's like ah eh, oh I've, doesn't I've, sound I've very much different shit. whatever i whatever i do on yeah. the walking dead i i don't know i don't know how to do D- uh daryl i i don't know how to do norman Reedus's voice well he has a neutral voice does it, I, I, yeah. You and your fucking rope. <laughs> hey, take Coral. Your rope. That's all. That's the best that's, they can that's do. The, that's Rick. I don't know. I don't watch The Walking Dead. Golly. Take a fucking rope. Okay, what's that from? I, I take a fucking what? Take your fucking rope. Oh, is that right, Rambo? I, I don't know. What's that one from? Really? You guys have never no. seen the Boondock Saints? Oh, Boondock Saints. Yeah, I, I've seen I have not. I should no. pull, pull that line. All right, take your fucking rope. In the movies, in the action movies. There's a second one of those, Charlie right? Bronson. They always have rope. <laughs> There's a second one too, right? Yeah, it's not as good as the not first. Not as good? It's not as good as the first, but nah. it's, it's, it's passable. Okay. But p- people wanted it and it came. Yeah. But when it comes and it's not always the thing that you want. That's true. So any, what are, did we, did we cover everything we wanted to in Logan? I feel like I'm... I'm still exhausted. Like I'm literally just and like when I was trying to sleep last night and failing thanks to the time change, uh, Did I you? like all I could think about was just that that last scene where she was like turning the X over on the grave. Like that really that like last scene. Like they yeah. they capped it really well. Like as far as like ending things and talk and like talking about endings and theming endings and making an ending, like that was good. That was about as good as it gets, folks, I think. Like, um, I like how they capped it off with him saying, like, oh, that's what this feels like. Because earlier in the movie, Professor X says to him, I want you to take a moment and just feel what it feels like to have a family. Yeah. And he's like, oh, feels uh, like that. Yeah. And then he, like, walks off. Yeah. But then he... Oh, I'm sorry, because that, that, that moment he said it, I interpret it as, like, oh, like, this is what death feels like. Oh, really? Yeah. And because I, she was like daddy, she says daddy, and then yeah, oh, he's, he's like, like a family. oh, yeah. this is that's what that feels like. But then I think, I think in a way that was also like the moment he knew his life was over because his whole life has been a struggle to find a family and to get family and to. But he's like constantly pushing people away. Exactly, but then he right. finally kind of accepted that at the very end. I think that was kind of like the moment he knew like that's where his character would have ended if he actually ever accepted his daughter but didn't die that's where wolverine would have ended yeah I think but i think that would be interesting as a character arc but we still got that who am i kidding we still got that yeah yeah it was so good it, it kind of reminded me of the death scene with william shatner as kirk in star Trek generations because when picard is looking down at kirk and uh kirk is like his whole life he's been like he says a lot of times he's like oh i've been cheated death i've tricked my way i've never faced it Mm -hmm. and he's like he looks down he's like it was it was fun then he looks up and he sees the death coming he's like oh my but not in like a fearful way like a like a release happy hopeful way i don't know why i I felt similar to me i don't know maybe just because there was you know stewards in both movies but uh Mm. anyway yeah the death scene really good definitely you know Felt like a tied loop off for for Logan. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 
definitely. I felt that. It, yeah. it, it was a good good end for him. How about you, Fong? What what was the high point for you? Oh, it's so hard to say. Like I I do think like I mean I I wouldn't call it a high point, but just again that death scene with Professor Xavier how it was how quiet it was yeah how quiet it was and it wasn't like this big like showy thing and you would think like for someone like professor xavier like he would go down in blaze of glory like an x3 right yeah. <laughs> but then he doesn't <laughs> don't let it control you yeah. boom but it was just Moira? like <laughs> quiet sick in bed like getting fucked over by x24 in like the shittiest, most underhanded way. That, that's the thing that I think we were, we keep saying, we haven't really like uh, verbalized it has how grounded in reality this movie felt. Yeah. And I think that's why, again, it felt, uh, Stephen often says that, you know, uh, art only works as when you can find truth in it. Mm -hmm. And, of course, he wasn't the first fucking person to say that. What a douche. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but <laughs> like, um, but there was there was because of that. We we I felt that it was the, the truth in this art was so much easier to grasp. Yes, mm-hmm. than, and, and they were able to do it without it seeming like boring or monotonous or so, inane. So let this be a lesson to Marvel, to Fox, and maybe Sony if they still have any sort of like future. <laughs> um, that these, that you don't have to treat these as comic books, quote unquote. They, you can treat them as actual stories. And when you treat it as a story, people actually fucking will pay. So are you saying don't treat them as comic books, treat them as graphic novels? <laughs> yes, please. Well, excuse me. They are graphic novels and they are literature. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll take a look at the best the best past um, Marvel movies that that worked the best was Deadpool and this one. And right. what do they do? And instead of trying to ignore the fact From that the they're From the Fox where, universe? What's that? From the Fox universe? Well, just mean? just like the like um from the Marvel universe. I mean, Deadpool and well, I mean, well, I mean, there were a couple that Marvel characters, little... I guess. Well, I should say, not Marvel. Winter Soldier was great, I thought. Well, I think the the, the ones that worked the best, though, like Deadpool and Logan, are the, yeah. were the ones where they acknowledge the comic book element itself and then push it away or contextualize it for the reader instead of trying to live up to some sort of comic book feel. Yeah. They're like, no, the comic book is is outside or. This is, you know, they deal with the comic in the film. Yeah. Like, Deadpool but did that, it. I don't think they need that, though. I have to disagree. Yeah. <clears throat> like, do you, do you need to ha- acknowledge the, 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 the farce, if you will? Well, you said that's, the, you're saying, like, the art is, gets best to the truth, and that's the truth of it, right? So mm-hmm. you're like, like, it kind of. Bi- Why not just present what the truth of the matter is without having to reference what it is? Yeah. Like well, have it be by being. Yeah, that, just, be. Will. just be. Well, just and, be. Well, and also the first Iron Man movie, I thought, <clears throat> was just really fucking great. And I think a big part of that was like showing a character that had flaws because that's who Iron Man... First of all, no one gave a fuck about Iron Man until the first Iron Man came out. And secondly, like he is inherently a flawed character. He is a fucking alcoholic. He is a narcissist. He's terrible at business. Everything that you would not like in a person. Yeah, yeah. but somehow, like, he's likable and people identify with him because they understand what it's like to have, like, these personal obstacles. So is that is that more to it being... Is that not meta in the way that you bobby kind of like put it but it's self-referential as in oh being self-aware yeah self-aware maybe that's like why of who the character is yeah. yeah because well the and that's i i guess that's usually a part of the character arc it's like your character starts off not self-aware and as his arc continues he becomes more self-aware yeah and that's the transformation right well and then that, that's part of the journey is finding out who you are and you can't be self-aware until you know who you are and so they start out in a place of no knowledge about themselves and they yeah. gain knowledge of themselves through the, the you know the different trials and and tribulations they got to go through that's it and let let that be a fucking lesson let that be a lesson to people who want to tell stories let the people let your characters figure out who they are mm-hmm. 
And I feel like people, that's the story that people want to see. Yeah. And that's why, and that's why I still say that Rogue One, even though a heavily plot driven movie uh-huh. was great because they found out something about themselves. Right. Yeah. I, I definitely agree. They found a cause that they were willing to dive with, die for. Yes. And, um, but wow. Yeah. I feel like we've, we've cracked a, a very, uh, uh ripe, uh, durian fruit here. Yes, and we it's did. Just, does it smell uh, it's just like breathing. ass now? Yeah. <laughs> this, this, this juicy uh, fruit topic has just uh, enveloped this room with its uh, stinkiness. Ooh, savor that, that flavor. That was a fucking weird analogy. That Metaphor. was a weird... I, did I say like? I said like, I think. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> Nerd fact checkers, check to see if I said like. But that is it. We gotta go. Um, be sure to check out uh, nerdfunnel.com, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and whatever else I didn't fucking mention. Dot com slash uh, nerdfunnel. Nerd um, like I said, coming up this week, we have a Legion review. A Legion review on uh, March 15th. 2017. Some fresh um, LPs for you coming at you this week, too. All manners. But that is it. Go see Logan. Bring a tissue. Bring, oh, yeah. bring many tissues. Yeah, bring any tissues. Get so many hugs. Thank you again, you guys, for not. You need the hugs after this yeah. movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But until then, later, nerds. 